uh, this uh, talks about the APIs which we have um, uh, since uh, we started our development contributing to Amanda we wanted to make sure there is uh, a consistent API around Amanda. So there is an Amanda core and in fact that's pretty much now being written in Perl partly because we wanted more people to contribute uh, rather than and it's and Perl gets supported in many many platforms. And there is one interface which we call as application API. This is the interface to the application. It could be a file system, it could be your Oracle database, uh, it could be a SQL database and so on and so forth. And the device API side is where we interface with various devices. So all new applications and all the devices that have been supported are uh, you done using this application API and device API. So all of them act as plugins. So you can have some plugins and uh, in your configuration and you don't, if you don't want them you can turn it off. Um, so one aspect which kind of is um, what is called RAID which is a redundant array of independent tapes. Um, it says tapes but it could be disk. It's not related to RAID in any way but it allows you to stream backup data to multiple devices in parallel at the same time. So the AM vaulting makes a copy of the data after a backup is completed from secondary media to tertiary media. Whereas in this case, you can have the copy of it in two different devices at the same time. So the next few slides, are, uh, we talk about more about how we have been working with ZFS and Open Solaris and uh, Nexenta Store. Uh, so ZFS can, uh, Amanda can be your primary media, it can be the disk staging area, the secondary media and tertiary media. Uh, there are a lot of advantages of using ZFS uh, for example uh, the holding disk as well as secondary media. Uh, one big advantage which is uh, there are the file size limit, in the backup images generally run into terabytes and petabytes. So the, the ZFS file limits and file system limits are pretty high. That's much makes, makes a big advantage for ZFS as, as opposed to say ext3 and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing uh, is we have multiple applications to perform ZFS backup with various methodologies. Uh, so for, for example one we use the normal uh, TARS to do backups in uh, any archiver which is available for ZFS can be acted as, added as a plugin for Amanda. And we also take advantage of ZFS snapshots. Um, so one thing which we do is in case of many customers do is in terms of applications they do regular hourly snapshots and they back up one particular snapshot for the day through Amanda. So that's one part of it and taking snapshots is a big advantage is because you can back up open files because we back up from a snapshot so we get a consistent view of backups. Otherwise if you use some other methodology um, when you're backing up open files you will not be able to read it and it will fail. Uh, we actually we support ZFS actles and extended attributes. Uh, this is uh, ZFS has various actles beyond uh, POSIX actles. Uh, so we have to write something special to do this work. And ZFS also has a notion of send and receive. Um, this is basically from any ZFS file system. You can ask for a stream of bytes. It's almost like a ZFS dump, uh, dump and restore, but it's but a stream. Uh, it comes as a stream. And this is a big advantage with ZFS. In the early version of ZFS file system, probably three, four years ago, uh, there were uh, issues with the compatibility format, whether they will keep it compatible. Now ZFS has become mature and it's fairly compatible. Uh, the last aspect is ZFS deduplication. Um, this is a big advantage for backup data because when you do backups, generally you're backing, when you're backing up the same thing, you generally have duplicate data over time as well as if you're backing up multiple machines which have very similar configuration, you'll have duplicates. So a dupl deduplication gets you very good benefit in the case of uh, backup data. The other aspect is when you do uh, backup images are generally deleted based on retention policy and so that they remain uh, in the media for a longer time. Especially, and the biggest disadvantage of deduplication is the deletion. Uh, deletion takes a long time and since the data is, doesn't get, backup images do not get deleted often, uh, only at the time of retention, so and it can take a longer time. It's a much 
uh, useful thing and in fact uh, many customers turn off deduplication for both me secondary and the tertiary media. Uh, in terms of open solaris um, and Nexanta actually it's a specific uh, there is a Nexanta has a notion of commercial and non-commercial plugins. Uh, there is an Amanda client available um, for Nexanta uh, which basically allows you to back up any Nexanta store. Uh, the other thing is uh, we do since Nexanta store you can install, we have Debian packages so people have installed Debian packages on that and converting the Nexanta store appliance into a backup server. And uh, as probably many of you know the Open Solar is a lots of builds and so we continuously test with that and uh, in fact we worked with very closely with Open Solaris team when they were part of Sun. Probably that may not happen in the future. And we do plan to continue to work with uh, Illumina OS and in the future. So let's take a look at how to back up Nexenta store. Um, so there are two parts to how we related to Nexenta store appliances. One is we can back it up as well as we can store data into Nexenta store. Uh, backups can be performed with the various protocols that Nexenta store supports, CIFs, NFS, and NDMP. Uh, the various three NDMP configurations are also supported. Um, I should say the three way NDMP configuration is probably not very well tested. Let's take a look at uh, examples of that. Uh, this is a case of an Accenta appliance. You back it up using NFS or SIFS protocol uh, to Amanda server and to you can back it up to this shows a tape changer but tape or cloud or disk. And uh, so the backup actually happens over NFS and the data moves from Amanda server to the tape through a SAN connection. In the case of uh, uh, cloud, it would be through network. Uh, uh, yes, so in this case, the client is actually running. You can run, that, that's one option, yes. Then you don't need NFS. Uh, you, we don't need the NFS, yes. But it's more like people, uh, one thing is, this is a plugin that needs to be installed as through apt-get. So customers may or may not want to st install additional plugins on the next center store. Uh, one reason is um, it makes your upgrade and so on and so forth easier. So people generally try to avoid installing new things. That's one more thing to be noted off. Um, and it basically, it can, backups can be done to any media which Amanda supports. And um, in, the, in this case, and the, the one thing issue is the NFS sensors, it's a file protocol, so it will be probably slower compared, especially it doesn't work very well um, when you have a lot of small files. Uh, this is a remote NDMP configuration. Uh, Nexenta uses the NDMP stack, which comes part of the Open Solaris. Um, in fact, that's also it's the same stack used by Sun Unified Storage. So it's well tested and it's mature stack. Um, so Amanda can back it up using NDMP. This works very scales very well with the size of uh, the size of the data being backed up as well as the number of files and all the better data attributes. For example, Z ZFS has much more metadata attributes, ACLs, than supports more security features than, uh, for example, a POSIX file system, such as ext3 and other file systems. So you need to have extra uh, features to support back those things up. Um, the advantage of it, since the tape and cloud and things like that do not have NDMP support, this is one way to back it up your data to disk or something which doesn't have NDMP support. Uh, one disadvantage of NDMP is the format um, is depends actually on the uh, implementation on the device. The case, this case is Open Solaris. Uh, even though Open Solaris actually uses the TAR format, um, it's as a backup program. We are not allowed to look it up because it's supposed to be pro vendor specific. So it's very, it's very, it'll always work only if you are able to restore to another Nexanta store or anything which is based on Open Solaris NDMP stack. So you'll not be able to restore it back to say another server which you have. In case some disaster happens, you may ha you'll have to have uh, an Nexanta store available to restore it. So your is not to use uh, it actually, there's a lot of trade-offs here. So if you have large files, if for critical data, use NFS. And if the number of files that you use the huge or uh, you want faster performance, then you'll have to use NDMP. 
So anything which you need for immediate disaster recovery to bootstrap the whole disaster recovery procedure, it, you should probably use NFS or SIFS. Or use the Amanda client which is installed on that one. That's always feasible. Yes. So yeah, my, my question was about the granularity of restoring information. Can you restore just one CBO or yes. even to the granularity of one file? My customer requires one particular file. I don't want to I, restore all my SAM. I understand. Yeah. So you the the between both NFS and SIFS and NDMP all will allow you to restore a particular file. Okay, so th there is not much difference in ability to restore a particular entity. Yes. Uh, one thing to note is uh, um, NDMP is a file protocol, so it can back up only file systems. It does not handle um, applications or anything like that. That's one. The second aspect is uh, NDMP will work with ZFS snapshots. So if you have a regular schedule of taking snapshots of an Accenture store and storing it, you can pick up one of them and back it up using NDMP. Okay. So that's a very common thing because uh, by default, most of these appliances are uh, scheduled to have uh, regular snapshots and you pick up on a daily basis one particular snapshot and perform backup from that. Yes. Go ahead, okay. Do you have to, to manually point it to the correct snapshot or it automatically takes a snapshot? Uh, okay, so Amanda can take a snapshot and pick it up, that's one way. Or if you're picking up, uh, if you have already well-defined schedule of taking snapshot, then you need to point it to a particular snapshot. That is you like a small Yes. So let's say that you have a scenario where your Nexenta is designed for a VMware deployment. Yes. And you have some virtual machines. And so those are, so you need to restore files that were within those virtual machines. That's kind of two levels of abstraction. Can you? Uh, okay. Those files? So, so you have to restore the whole virtual machine and then look into the snapshots. Okay, so one thing is, uh, this is a very good question actually. So when you have VMware or something like running on top of Nexenta store, uh, you cannot use NDMP or any of these methods to do the backups because these are basically a file system backup. So we, Amanda uh, Enterprise actually provides a VMware backup capability using the VMware APIs. And uh, the, I'm not very sure about it, I think uh, Nexenta store does support, has been integrated with VMware snapshots. So when we use the VMware API, communicate with the hypervisor, uh, it will be able to take a snapshot of the guest VM and go f move forward. So in terms of, you answer the question of restoration part of it, uh, you will have to restore the whole guest VM and pick up files from that. Uh, so there is no API right now from a VMware to pick a particular file from the snapshot they have taken. So the procedure basically what Amanda does is it takes a snapshot of the VM and uh, the data disks, the VM DKs might be situated on Nexanta store. So when we issue, ask it to be take a snapshot, they will translate into the VM DKs. They'll identify the VM DKs and we actually identify until the, take a snapshot, that will get translated into uh, ZFS snapshots. I'm not very sure if that part does happen or not. It, uh, that requires actually some work from ZFS folks to integrate with VMware snapshot API. So if it's there, then it'll get translated and with snapshot, consistent snapshot is taken. Okay, so let's move on and uh, this is the third option which you have is the direct NDMP. Uh, this is uh, option is very useful if you have a tape library or a tape changer on the same SAN as your Nexanta store. So the data actually goes directly from Nexanta store to the tape library. It doesn't go through the Amanda server and this is much faster and very efficient to do that. But of course this requires your tape library or even for example VTLs. All, so for example, Falcon Store, all the VTLs do support NDMP, and you can connect it directly, be in the same sand, the data never comes, hits the network. The only data which moves to the Amada server is the control traffic and the index files, which I talked about, so that it goes there. Okay, and this is uh, the one aspect which you'll have is, um, in this case is, since the data doesn't go through Amanda server, there is no compression or encryption provoked done by Amanda server at all. And NDMP does not support compression or encryption. Uh, there are, um, this is one area probably next Santa probably will, uh, may have to do something. When you, if let's assume you have a deduplicated data on the next Santa store, when it data is read by NDMP, uh, it will get undeduplicated, whatever, even basically it can get expanded again. 
Okay, so there are, uh, this is some work that needs to be done for integration of the NDMP, that's something which probably Nexanta store doesn't do that yet.